Oh, here we are again now and it's like no time has passed Gazing out upon the sunset as it sinks into the night Many times it seemed as though a given day might be our last Face to face with certain death, it's somehow coming out all right I don't think that we have any cause to lament But there's quite a lot of thrilling intent Thrilling intent Thrilling intent, thrilling intent. Last we checked in on everyone, it was currently raining, and you guys are now stuck with a slowly statuifying Mercedes. So, you scan the horizon, and you actually manage to discover a part of the palace that wasn't completely flattened by the tower fall. It still seems to be standing in relatively good order, and Marcus, you actually recognize this wing to a certain degree. So, you decided to turn and run towards that. You you approach the palace running over this big open field. What were once well-kept grasslands are now sort of overgrown, interspersed with various levels of gross dust, this sand-like material that seems to compose the tower. Uh, this area has fallen to disrepair, but the weeds are having a really hard time overtaking whatever this almost uh, fine powdery material is. You approach the wall of the palace and find one of its side entryways. The door is blown clean off their hinges by what appears to be an explosion of the same sand. They lie a short distance into the palace, almost discarded. Marcus, you recognize this place. This is the side. This is the side entrance. You came in here once or twice on your way to the servants' quarters. This is mostly an area reserved for curiosities, areas for members of the public to visit. Uh, those, of course, of a high enough cast. This is surreal to see. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay. Uh, do I recall correctly that this is, like, within the substance of the tower or something? You, um, so this is like, it's a little distance away from the tower. It wasn't oh, flattened okay, by it. its impact, is the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost connected to the tower to a certain extent, the backside of it, which appears to have flattened the remainder of the palace. But right. uh, this itself seems to be a freestanding structure, is the best description I've got. Wow, this is nice. Yeah, this is... Exactly how I remember it as a kid, except for the ruin and rubble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that? You're, you're familiar with this, then? Uh, you could say that. Yeah, yes. Not this part of the palace so much, but um, I've been I've been through here at least once, and you know, heard about it other times. It's uh, it's no big deal. I used to work here. My, it, it, we don't have to get into it. Mercy looks at this part of the castle and remembers that this would, would have been the servant's side and looks back at Marcus. I'm... I'm sorry. Don't be. Hmm. Also, I think that be. this isn't quite the servant's area, but, um... I guess it's it would close. be, like... It would be, yeah, probably in the same section of the palace. This is the entrance that your father brought you through. Gotcha. Well, what do you say we get into it? That would be nice. That sounds good. That Thank sounds you. good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> How's everybody feeling, Marcus? Are you tired? Gregor, are you tense? Mercy, do you need any, like, oil or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, oil might not be a terrible idea. It burns quite well. Um, <laughs> Have oil? Oh. Have a lot of things. We've got, And we've got a very greasy mage with us. <laughs> oh my god, Gregor, you're right. We have unlimited oil. We could probably wring some out of her hair. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, or her sweatpants. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I have done nothing to deserve this over the last ten to fifteen minutes. Did you shower in the last ten to fifteen minutes? Because that's... Yes, it's raining. <laughs> I don't know where these hostilities come from. Indian, you look lovely. <laughs> Thank you. But you smell <laughs> Thank you for the bickering. It's helping to take the fever, the fever dream edge off of this experience for me. Just as planned. 
Holy crap. So yeah, you all you all come forwards and um you enter the palace. And Harlock, I am very tired. It's been for me one extremely long, extremely bad day. Well, um if it makes you feel any better, I have an idea. Yeah? So, like, this is a really big backpack I have, right? Like really big. <laughs> and I think you could fit in it. Oh, I could definitely fit in that backpack. But I probably couldn't carry you. So I'm thinking that we put it on <laughs> Mercy, okay. and Mercy carries you so you can take a nap. Oh, that's... huh. I've been thinking about this all day. <laughs> have you really? Harlock, I'm touched. Is your backpack fireproof? Um, relatively, actually. Wait, why does it need to be fireproof, Gregor? <laughs> well, Mercy, right? <laughs> Oh, right, right. Sorry, I forget you're a little on fire sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be a nice warm pocket. <laughs> that well, is I'm, incredibly tempting. To be fair, thanks to the rain, I'm not nearly as warm. Oh, right. Are you all right, Mercy? Well, um, she gestures to herself, and you see that um, at least one of her legs is basically walking with, like, being dragged. Um, it does not bend right now, and she's having a lot of difficulty moving her arms, and you see that a lot of the heat, or at least the orange patches, are very dim, and even her hair is, like, looking not nearly as vibrant. Um, this just so happens with water in general. It's whenever you right. cool heated metal. Wait. Yep, that needs oil. What do you drink? Well, I... I can partake in water and things like that, but it's more of from the outside because... It's the outside water, not the inside water that gets you. <laughs> Precisely. I know that yeah. sounds ridiculous. It no, it doesn't. It does not at all. <laughs> what do you do when you need a bath? I mean, you can probably burn the grime off, right? That's more or less what I do, but if I I'm, <laughs> I'm, if, if I want to feel special and I want to have a nice bubble bath, I kind of don't get to, so, you oh, know... I'm so <laughs> sorry. Oh. Fire bath sounds way better. Yeah, note to self, try and create fire bubble bath. Yeah, we'll do it with lava. With <laughs> No, that's actually, that's a great idea, yeah. <laughs> Some, sometimes a girl gets to enjoy just laying in her forge. It's, it's nice. <laughs> oh, that does sound nice. Like nice and cozy and warm? Oh yes, quite. And best part, I can work while I'm in there. It's very nice. <laughs> okay, that seems to defeat the purpose of relaxation and rest, but you do you. It's <laughs> fine. You hear her dragging her metal leg against <laughs> the stone. <laughs> you. So I think I'm going to pass on that nap for now, Harlock, but I'll keep that in mind because there's a very real chance I will pass out on my feet at some point. Okay, well, don't walk into this obviously trapped area. <laughs> I'm happy to help wherever. Where are you going? <laughs> Are like you grab Marcus and pull him back. Yep. You Look, um I've been here before. I'm pretty sure there were not any traps. I'm pretty sure. You take a look around, and as your eyes scan this sort of desolate like corridor, the entire place seems obviously covered in rubble, relatively quiet, almost worryingly so. As you're moving along, the sounds of your conversation manage to sort of liven up the area. But, as the silence sets in, as you struggle to listen for some sort of mechanism, trap, etc., some sort of monster in here, the deafening silence sort of sets in. This palace is completely abandoned. You can feel it almost oozing from the air. No one's been in here for at least, like, I don't know. Can't quite tell how long, but life has abandoned this place. Marcus, it's a far cry from the place you used to visit. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is kind of really, really, really weird for me, guys. Um, so there's no um, sign of life whatsoever? There's none. Uh, Indian speaks up. I'd actually like to make a suggestion. I, I think we should rest. I think we should all just take a rest in here, like... Like, just a nap, kind of, kind of thing? Just... Just a nap. It seems quiet. We can, seems safe. We can take we can take turns like standing on guard and stuff. Like, yeah. Are we sure it's safe to do that? I mean, what else are we gonna do? As safe as it could be, I think. Outside yeah. isn't safe because the rain hates mercy. And further outside isn't safe because whatever comes out of the tower is probably gonna want to destroy us and paste us to the floor. <sighs> The things to consider as well is, while we're in here, we haven't done a full surveillance yet, but 
We seem to be alone, and as long as we remain quiet, it should remain that way. And besides, if we did try to make a run for it, even in the rain, if the bell rings again, yeah. we are not getting away from that. That's what I think, too. There, there should be several different rooms in this area. What if we uh, choose one of them to rest up in, maybe do all we can to close off the entrance and station somebody as, like, to keep watch? I think that's about as safe as we can make it. I think you're hmm. right. If anything saw us go in here, it probably would have come after us. Yeah. Hmm. And Precisely. It really doesn't look like there's anything that's been in here. There aren't any, like, footprints in the dust or signs of any sort of activity. <clears throat> no. Yeah, this, this place looks utterly dead. Yeah, um, no ominous gashes is the big thing. Oh, <laughs> that thank was... God. That's, I was that's hoping for some ominous it. gashes. <laughs> <laughs> Why oh, do you I... hope for that? That's bad. That means there's something there. That, that means there's something there that can gouge stone with its fucking hands and or weaponry. There's always going to be something that can gouge stone with its hands and or. I weaponry. know that. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I can too. Do you want? Do you want some ominous gouges? Uh, uh, no, I wouldn't want you to waste your energy. I would not I do would, it for like, me. I, I'd, I'd actually like to ask you not to, because that would kind of make me feel a little guilty. Oh, uh, so you don't want to break everything around here. Not really. That's fair. I mean, kind of, but also kind of not really. It's already all jacked up. Yeah, maybe it's salvageable. <sighs> yeah, maybe it is. I'm just a rock farmer, not a rock worker, but... <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's overlap. <laughs> patch this up with some, you know, rock. No, we're following up on Mercy's question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, uh, rock farmer? Well, former rock farmer. Oh, well, that answers everything. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I feel like that- Glad to get you up to speed, Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 right, no, let's no, no. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I think the wine cellar's nearby. Oh, you want to get drunk at a time like this? No, I don't want to get drunk. I want a nice red wine nightcap to a very <laughs> long, very bad day. I don't want to get inebriated. I want what I deserve, which is to treat myself. Is there Somebody a... of your weight must get drunk in about, what, two sips? Yeah. Is there a... <laughs> I've also lost a fair amount of blood, so maybe just one. Is there a water cellar instead? No. There's no. probably at least some water in there that... There's water outside. There's also vintage uh, grape juice, I think, if you just want something non-alcoholic. Hmm. That that could give me the sugar energy boost I need. You... Is that what you run on? <laughs> ah, here we are. <laughs> you you come into the you come into the wine cellar. It's this uh honestly overly gaudy like <sighs> It's 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 a place of collected alcohols, overly gaudy. All of them are mm -hmm. placed inside glass cases. There's some sort of mm -hmm. ominous pulsating substance on the far side of the room, but you ignore that and instead decide to focus on the wine. <laughs> I don't recognize the pulsating presence. You don't recognize that pulsating presence. Okay. Well, this is nice wine, though. My my attention is very much pulled to the wine. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that no one can casually stroll away from my slow hobbling, what is a rock farmer? <laughs> I am. Oh, Tannhauser's too good for rock farmers? No! <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I don't know! <laughs> I don't know what it is! No, I'm, I'm with her. It's, but... it's exactly what it sounds like. Come no. on, it's not... Yes. <laughs> do you mean mining? No, one who grows rocks in soil. You do <laughs> not grow a rock! <laughs> Where do you oh, think no, rocks come that from? attitude. <laughs> Yes, Gregor, thank you. You would know best. I shouldn't be talking all over your expertise. Yeah, I think I told this story a long time ago. Uh, but basically, yeah, before I came an Outrider and before my parents died, we were all rock farmers. Duh, we'd dig up rocks, we'd put rocks in the ground, we'd move the rocks. What? See, I was a kid, so I you was- You know, actually, now I'm interested. How did you turn a profit doing this? <laughs> uh, we were super poor. Just like oh, everybody. Well, sure, sure. I mean, most farmers are. It's kind of an unsustainable way of life, the way it's usually set up. But, um, what, d did people buy your rocks? Did you go to a farmer's market and sell your rocks? Why have I never questioned this before? <laughs> 
this has been brought up and it was never questioned. No, not once. <laughs> I mean, who's I've learned not to question everything here. You think your average Joe is just going to buy rocks? No. Well, I mean, some people must need rocks for something, right? Oh, yeah. Like, look at all the rocks they used to make this place. I mean, Probably some yeah. rich rock farmer. Yeah, Dude, a, t a ton of rocks. Are you talking about bricks? Mm, these are actually stone blocks. Stones are rocks, Mercy. Some other parts of the palace are made of brick. Mercy claps her hands together and is like processing how to talk to children <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh no. I, you know what? That's super swell. That's great. I'm, I learned a lot today. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> it wasn't that great. We were very poor, and my family died. I, Gregor, I'm, I'm sorry, Gregor. I'm very sorry. Um, hmm. <laughs> I is is there anything that I can do? I, I realize that's a very silly question to ask, but I like to inquire all the same. Oh no, it's fine. See, I have money now, and I can pay people to farm rocks for me. Yeah, high five. Success is the best revenge. Oh yeah, guys, help me pull out the uh, little, the miniature velvet pillows that are cushioning the uh, finest vintages in these cases. We can stack them up and make a big bed. You collect like 30 pillows. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and Ian, this is a pretty good table fort you have here. Yeah, I was thinking a barricade could do us pretty well. She... Oh. And Ian looks up and over at uh, Mercy. See, that's the thing. It's like, it starts off, and then it gets sad, and then it gets... It starts off, and your brain shuts off, then it gets sad, <laughs> then... It, it always gets sad. Yeah, it's the most fun I've ever had. But but then it comes back, and it ends up on Ridiculous again, so you don't know. It's like it's like a sandwich, where for a split second there's some earnesty on the inside and some empathy, and then on the outside you're just confused again. <laughs> she puts her head back against the table. I see. I mean, that's the human experience for you, right? <laughs> you say, collecting tiny pillows. <laughs> and... Also noticing this uh, weird pulsating presence, which, uh, oh, yeah, hmm. Do you, you, you recognize that pulsating mass now? I do? Yeah, what like a little bit. That's that's the pulsating mass. It's, um, it, uh... Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, this, uh, this thing... You've come in here once or twice, and always on the far side of the room, mixed in with the various wines and alchemical substances, there has always been this almost grotesque thing over in the corner. Almost a, a little individual pool, a borderline jelly that sits at the center of the room, almost suspiciously. Strange that it would be kept in what is functionally a wine cellar, but if you had to yeah. guess, this is something either alchemical in nature or something adjacent to that. And, and this is not an unusual place for it to be, like, based on where I've seen it before? You remember seeing it here. Like, yeah, okay. You looked across the room and you're like, ew, that looks gross. Why is there a big jelly in the room? And now that you're like, it's, it's not, it's not Was like I this ever is- Was I warned about it in any way or no. like just, okay. Yeah, well, no, that's fine. If, if, it's, if it's just the pulsating mass, then that's fine. I thought <laughs> it was some <laughs> other weird new pulsating mass. No, you were warned basically that uh, you, if you broke anything in this room, you would be paying for it for the rest of your life. Uh, and... Marcus breaks a bottle casually. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. <laughs> you you break this like 20, 30,000 gold bottle of wine on the floor and laugh to yourself. Honestly, this is the best you've felt in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that is just straight up bottled catharsis right there. <laughs> uh, Marcus, are you all right? I, I heard a bottle break. Oh yes, no, I I did it for I did it for personal reasons. Yeah, we don't need alcohol. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I actually was going to drink this alcohol. I just kind of felt like breaking something. Oh. What's the good stuff, Marcus? Uh do I know the good stuff? You Are you gonna I mean, are you I think it's all good stuff? This is the this it is, is like yeah. the wine cellar, so it's all well, like what are you feeling? Oh, liquor, uh, wine? What's the best stuff? What's well, the stuff that Whoever your boss was told you that you couldn't even touch. Hmm. Well, the, the, this stuff in the bumpy bottle is, uh, 
Yeah, no, that's our that's Arcadian wibble wobble. You want to <laughs> smash get you it, or you want to drink it? <laughs> I mean, I think if I drink that, it would have to be a very little because it's uh, rather powerful. All right, you take a sip. I'll handle the rest. <laughs> uh, Harlock. When I say very powerful, I am not exaggerating. Yeah, Even a little. Alcohol bit. keeps us warm in Free Arc. Yes. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how how flammable is that? Extremely. <laughs> My, here, I'm, Mercy, uh, here's, here's a wine with a way lower alcohol content if you would like a drink. Oh, dear, I need something that's going to burn. I need to get these legs <laughs> okay. up and running well, again. Well, then, uh, <laughs> some lower proof alcohol, then? Oh, wait, you need something that's going to burn. Oh, yes, I'm going to light it on fire. On me. <laughs> okay. Um, well, then, I guess... I guess this red bottle is probably, like, it has a bunch of danger fire symbols on it. Oh, so, perfect. Uh, as most red bottles do. Inferno <laughs> Cognac? I have not actually heard of that one, but yeah, here you go. This shall do lovely. Uh, Mercedes has difficulty, like, sitting down just because everything's so stiff, and her leg might as well just be a peg leg at this point. Uh, anyway, I can she, help, by the way? No, no, I, I'll be fine, dear. You've, you've done plenty, and besides, you should take a little nap if you can. I and should. I, I've got this handled, and she starts pouring oh. the... Uh, the Thank alcohol you for making under, like... such a wonderful bedtime area. What? <laughs> but if we use the table for the barricade, what do we sleep under? All of these tiny pillows, says Marcus, gesturing to the pile of tiny pillows. We're in a room. You look at the pile of tiny pillows. Mercedes, what's going on with you? Yeah, no, she's just pouring all of this alcohol on her leg and her arms, and you see once again she says those uh, magical words to uh, release the ice from her hand, and then she just lightly pats herself over and over until her legs just ignite, and she's like, ah, and she just lays back <laughs> as they start to reheat again. <laughs> Do you want more flammable stuff? Because I can keep pouring that on your legs if you if oh, that would help. If you could get my hair, that would be lovely. Of course. Do I, like, rub it in, or...? Oh, just... Oh, dear, you don't want to get your hands in there. That's going to get quite flammable in a moment. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I'll be fine, don't worry. He's fireproof. Oh, well, lovely. <laughs> Most people are fireproof. <gasps> if... I, okay. I'm sorry to request this. It's been so long. Can you do my hair? <laughs> you just requested that, actually, but I think you might be a little delirious right now. No worries, so am I. Marcus starts uh, pouring the liquor into her hair and massaging it in like shampoo. No, no, no. She's saying do her hair, like... What? Like, 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 Indian gestures. What's, what does that mean? Like, make it look good. Don't just set it on fire. Make it, make it look good. Come on. It looks awesome. awesome better. I mean, honestly, the little uh, masseuse action on top is wonderful because not, basically no one else can touch my hair. And yeah. as you can see, Wait, and did you, you see the parts. you want me to cut it or style it? Oh, heavens no. No, just, just like, just, just. Do something with it. Be, just be fancy. Okay, all right. Okay. Um. You do notice you that with Mercedes' hair is that like wherever the water is hit, it almost looks like hardened steel wool. You know, hmm. it's right. kind of a weird texture to see all this like vibrant orange that flows beautifully, and then this like crinkly, nasty yeah. hard metal. I think uh, <laughs> Marcus will use any of the remaining like liquor here to uh, to catch the fire that is on the, like, unhardened parts of her hair and, like, maybe remelt those down. Does that work? Yeah. Like, ba basically, cool. uh, for, for Mercy, and she'd explain this as you did her hair, is, mm. like, this will not kill her. But That's if good. she were to be, like, thrown in a river, mm -hmm. um, she would basically become a statue and then drown. Right. Um, but basically, as long as she's given enough time... Well, maybe not while she's a statue, though, right? Oh, yeah. She oh, still, yeah. like, can breathe oh, no. in things. Like, it's basi basically oh, her outside... Okay. I thought it was, like, a suspended animation Yeah, situation. basically her body will just harden and solidify into a statue-like form, but she's still, like, alive and breathing right. and things like that. So, but she explains that if she's given enough time, and especially if she's given heat, her inner core will just eventually reheat her body to be mobile again. I see. That's really, that's really interesting, actually. But it also sounds kind of... Difficult to work around. She shrugs. It does take some 
getting used to because um, we four, Jason, we we don't start off like this. Heavens, I pity the mother. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but over time, we begin to become more like this. And she gestures to her hair and then to her hands um, until eventually we're basically just pure liquid heated metal. Honestly, it's a uniquely gorgeous look. Thank you. It's totally, it, yeah. And I think I have all of the uh, kinks worked out of your hair here. Marcus <gasps> is like using his fingers as a comb. So, oh. and let me see if I can't like sweep that into some sort of nice uh, quaffed updo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So, if you're liquid metal, does that mean you can like forge yourself into shapes? Uh, she looks over at Gregor. Well, um, with my hands, if I really wanted to, I, I certainly could. I try to avoid it because, um, it just, it doesn't, I don't, I don't want to say it hurts. It just isn't comfortable to go from a hand to an axe. What it about just, to a glaive? <laughs> well, I haven't tried that yet, so maybe things will be different, but it's just that, I feel uncomfortable, and I want to stay as human as possible. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, Gregor, changing your arm is a process. <laughs> By the way, um, how's your arm holding up? My not arm? Your not arm, yeah. How's, how's that doing? How are you doing? I'm actually feeling pretty light. I've got some spring in my step. I noticed you've been a little bit more energetic, but at the same time... <laughs> A lot more useful, useless. Uh, it, and you're kind of leaning to one side. We should really <laughs> get your, we should get your prosthetic up and running, if only for just like your own sake, I guess. I want to remind everyone of the surprise inside meat, by the way, which could be very dangerous. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I forgot about the surprise inside meat. And Ian looks. Oh, let's check it out. And Ian, <laughs> and Ian looks across and then looks at the pulsating mass. Hmm. There's a lot. <laughs> There's surprise inside meat in here, too. Yeah, no, that's the pulsating mass. I wouldn't, like, mess with it, but it, it, it's not on you. It, like, it, it's generally kept here. Marcus. This isn't a weird place for the pulsating mass to be. Are, are you kidding me? You just said the phrase, this is the pulsating mass, don't mess mm -hmm. with it. Are you yeah, kidding no. me? It was, it was here when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, this is our nap sanctuary. I don't want to... Uh... Also, I think I'm done, Mercedes. That's the best I can do. <laughs> Honestly, Marcus, this is positively charming. I have not had a nice little hair day oh, in literal years, so thank you. I'm not much of a stylist, but, like, I could always kind of try and teach myself a little, so let me know if you want me to try that again. And, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to fall asleep immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, dear, Marcus falls back into a bunch of tiny pillows and is, like, <laughs> snoring practically oh. before he hits the ground. He, he did it? <sighs> Did what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Marcus comes up for half a second, proud of his accomplishment, and then re-passes out. 